Do you remember Jesus um, with Peter at Caesarea Philippi, Matthew 16? Who do you say that I am? And Peter said what? You're the Christ. You're the son of the living God. And Jesus says, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Great job. You didn't, you didn't get it on your own. God revealed it to you, because that's always salvation. God reveals it. And Peter got a little arrogant, didn't he? And Jesus immediately began to tell them how he's going to go and suffer and die. And what did Peter say? No, no, Lord, that's not the way it's going to happen. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. And do you, do you remember what Jesus teaches Peter right thereafter? He says, Peter, listen to me. Not only am I going to have to die, but you're going to have to die too. And he says, Peter, not only am I going to die, and you're going to have to die, but then he says, if anyone wants to follow me, let him take up what? His cross. Is a cross a nice, easy, comfortable path? No, the object of our great worship is a hangman's noose. You want to follow me, you got to be willing to lay down your life and to find yourself caught up in the perfect will of God, no matter what that means. I just want to be so clear with you today. We, we don't, here at Linux, I don't, I don't want you to get the old bait and switch. If you follow Christ, you've got to be willing to lay down your life. It's, it's Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. The most, to me, the most amazing moment in Jesus' ministry was in that garden where he prayed if there's any other way to do this deal. Jesus was not excited about going to the cross and bearing your sin and being separated from the Father. But you remember what he said at the end? Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And Christians, true believers, are people who, at the moment of salvation and then moving forward in every other moment of their life, they're confronted with decisions where they have to ask, am I going to do what is personally advantageous? Am I going to follow my own desires, my plans and dreams? Or am I going to just protect my own life? Or am I going to give my life up into the perfect will of God? Because, and, and I say this, and I realize I'm getting away from the false prophet here, but bear with me for a moment. There's a lot of people out there that are just getting, trying to get Jesus to work their side of the street. And I want to tell you that is false Christianity. They just want to add, it's a self-help Jesus. That I want to just add Jesus to my life so that he can help me pursue my goals and my dreams. There's a lot of other pastors that have encouraged me. Hey, pastor, you need to help your men be better business leaders. We want to help you be better business leaders. But God didn't call me to make better business leaders. God called me to tell sinners that your only hope is Jesus Christ. And if you want to know his life and salvation, you've got to lay down your life. 